Troy McCanty can't help himself. Cops are on him like white on rice. Troy McCanty, this is Agis First Murders. This was taken by Troy on the weekend at the Gate Bar and Bistro in Coburn. He's being served with another dispersal notice. He's had a few of these. They're the ones you get when you're banned from seeing someone for seven days. Different to the anti-consorting notice he got that's far more serious. Banned you from seeing certain individuals for up to three years. Ah, oh, jeez. He holds the phone like you. You've got to do it sideways. This would be his fourth, maybe fifth, dispersal order. Who is he with that he shouldn't have been? Blake Osman is a Mongol, like Troy. Have a go at the size of this unit. Oh, the first thing that strikes me with this scene is just how orderly everything is. All right, so that's going to be the front page done. I've got some important other parts to read you as well. It's like a crash course in the criminal code every time one of these notices is issued. This is first notice which has been issued under section 36 of criminal law, unlawful consorting, Prohibition Insignia Act 2021. All business. The second thing that strikes me is don't worry about the bikies, have a go at how menacing the cops are. You know when they say a picture tells a thousand words? This picture says, do not f with me. You'd be stupid to. Here's a tip for a happy life. If you get questioned by a police officer that has GRT written anywhere on his uniform, then best do as you're told, otherwise life is going to get a lot harder for you. I don't even think you really know what a bad day is. GRT stands for Gang Response Team. They're a small unit within the gang crime squad. It's the GRT's job to get up in the grill of people like Troy McCanty and enforce the law. And they take absolutely no shit when they are doing that. You tell them I'm coming and hell's coming with me, you hear? We passed the toughest bikey legislation in Australia and that is now being enforced by the toughest cops in Australia. And the police in that video are, not only because they can handle themselves physically, but also mentally. Imagine spending your days being talked to like this. Or this. Don't be ashamed of yourself, mate. Look up. Hmm, smart ass. You'd think he'd learn. Learn what? To not hang out with bikies? Yeah. Who else is McCanty going to hang out with? He's worked out there's a link between talking to a bikey and getting a dispersal notice. Don't you see the pattern here? but I reckon he's willing to take that risk at the moment. He doesn't have much of a chance to make non-bikey friends. Imagine Troy McCanty walking to the local men's shed. I killed my pencil. Broke? You broke your pencil? I broke him. Look, he's not going to get much sympathy. Yeah, I, I get it. Most people agree with you as well. And I get why. You can argue he's forfeited his right to be part of civil society. But the intent of the Criminal Law Unlawful Consorting and Prohibited Insignia Act 2021 wow. is to prevent harm to members of the public and stop them feeling intimidated. Now, the part of the law that stops bikies wearing colours is an important part of that. Having a pack of Gypsy Jokers together is an intimidating presence when they're all patched up. <laughs> although those guys could be wearing clown suits and they're still going to be intimidating. But if we're talking about a couple of guys who aren't wearing colours and aren't showing gang tats and these blokes weren't when they were at the gate, are they being intimidating? Is there the potential to cause public harm if they're having what appears to be a skinny flat white with a Jim Beam chaser? So you reckon these guys aren't intimidating? This guy... Of course he is. But being a massive unit can't be the test, surely. And believe me, he isn't the only bloke that looks like that at the Gate Bar and Bistro. We're not talking about a pub famous for its cool climate pinot and live beat poetry. Woman. Whoa, man. Whoa, man. Still, McCanty knows the law, so it's tough luck, really. Maybe. Maybe we're at the point where being Troy McCanty is intimidating enough. He doesn't need to be doing anything else other than be himself. We both knew when it come to this. That's enough for people around him to feel threatened, fearful or intimidated, which is itemised in the law. His presence anywhere has an undue adverse effect on the health or safety of members of the public, or it might increase the likelihood of public disorder acts or violence. But that's an odd way to draw up legislation. Do you think he's a risk to public safety? To be honest, if you're at a pub and someone's abusing innocent people, minding their own business, then you'd probably want Troy McCanty to be there to sort it out. 
He's never been the guy that started punching random strangers. That's not in his code. Really? I know what you're talking about. Troy McCanty arrived at court accused of grievous bodily harm. That's him in 2007 at Geisha Bar in Northbridge, punching out a bloke who was a half a foot taller than him and 20 kilos heavier. That bloke started it. OK, so it sounds to me like you're saying this dispersal stuff goes too far. I'm not comfortable with police officers telling citizens who they can and can't talk to at the pub if those citizens are not creating a disturbance and just keeping to themselves. But, on the other hand, if a bikey looks at me sideways, I want someone from the gang crime squad to carry me out of the pub like Kevin Costner or Whitney Houston in The Bodyguard. You want your cake and eat it. And anyway, why do a bikey look at you sideways? All outlaw bikey gangs need morons like Samuel. If you join a bikey gang and you've completed high school, you get the nickname Brains. This guy is a bikey whore. And that's why I drink at home. I'm Ben Harvey. For more up late, click the subscribe button below.